So I hereby welcome Femi Boyede. Before we go ahead though, please remember on the chat group, use the chat for your questions and use the chat to introduce us all. Part of what we do is to network, to know each other. So please use the chat to put your name, your job, um, where you're joining us from, your phone number, your email, any information you feel comfortable sharing, please share on the chat forum. And I hereby welcome Femi Boyede, our host, for this webinar series. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Lady Kay. Uh, um, a very erudite, um, beautiful anchor, moderator, <laughs> and um, well, you yeah, are the driver of uh, the sessions. Thank you very much. I want to, on behalf of the technical team of admins of the Talking Trade and Investment Global, welcome everyone who has uh, taken time out to uh, attend today's program. Um, that will be more like a glorified uh, uh, gesture uh, because uh, we are very, very confident that at the end of the day, as they say in church, you will not be the same again. Why are we convinced that you will not be the same again? Uh, we have tracked Captain John Okapu for over several months, tracked and tracked, uh, and finally we were able to get him to agree to come and share. Um, it's not everybody uh, who willingly shares the secret of their success. Um, I've always said that um, there is a misconception in um, a particular part of the world I know of, they interpret knowledge is power to mean hoarding information so that they are the only ones who are in possession of that information. Mm -hmm. For them, that is uh, what makes them powerful. However, we are grateful that uh, we have somebody who has, as I described him, been so selflessly and passionately pursuing an agenda that is in 100% tandem with what we at uh, Talking Trade uh, believe in. That is the possibility and the potential of non-oil exports to re reconstruct and um, solidify the economy and of course the future of Nigeria. So I want to on your behalf, thank Captain John Okapu of uh, ABX World for kindly agreeing to come on today to share um, what he knows the agro export sector holds and uh, how that has become key or rather the key to Nigeria's economic future. Uh, talking trade and investment global is just as uh, Lady Kay has explained. It's a platform where we try to uh, bridge information gap. You want to um, engage in international trade, your key uh, requirements, uh, imperatives are information, information, information. It's information that helps you to build export readiness. It's information that helps you to design your export strategy. It's information that helps you to launch into and um, sustain yourself in the global market space. And so we uh, decided, me and uh, the uh, very selfless people uh, that uh, God has kindly um, blessed me with, who, who are monthly and almost every week, um, sparing their time and their knowledge to free of charge bring this uh, webinar series to us. We, in a few months, will be celebrating our second year. And then um, I want to believe that those who have stayed with us will attest to the quality, not just of the program, but of the uh, guest speakers. Just as an example, uh, Captain John, that we have with us here today. Uh, you want to read uh, more and know more, every single session is uh, available on our uh, Facebook page, YouTube page, and other social media uh, platforms. Please feel, uh, feel free to refresh yourself. 
I can assure you that you go there, um, it's people who are in the know, uh, who are in the do of international trade that we have always um, tried and by God's grace succeeded in bringing as our guest speakers. Okay, so it's not, it's not my floor. The floor belongs more to the guest speaker. Again, Captain, I want to say a very big thank you, not just for accepting, but of course, if no other person knows, you and I know how many times a day we have been communicating and um, how really, really important we hold your yeah. presentation today. And therefore, again, to say on behalf of every other person who is here with us to say uh, today to say thank you. One thing I know for thank sure, you. everything we have always done, we have always tried to uh, take the summaries to the relevant authorities. And I'm sure you know that some time ago, the ED of NEPC was here with us. Um, some time ago also, the uh, Director General of Smedan was on this platform. Some time ago, the President of National Association of Nigerian Traders, and I could go on and on and on. But we are very blessed today to have you. Thank you very much. And I wish us all, please feel free to ask uh, questions that will build or that will satisfy your uh, re your original intention of registering for today's session. Thank you very much. Yes. So who are we blessed to have today? We have um, Captain John Okap, who is a tested and well trusted uh, commercial pilot that graduated from Airline Training Institute in San Carlos, California and is the first Nigerian in that school on the honor roll. Between 1987 and 1990, Captain John T. Okapu was at the end of affairs of Skyway Aviation Services, a US-based company specializing in air ambulance and air charter services. He returned to Nigeria in 1998 to commence the business activities of Airborne Express and Air Business Express, ABX, Work, um, uh, and an allied uh, agro allied solutions company. He ventured into agriculture after acquiring his first airline, 1767 to 100 cargo plane, and discovered that aircraft flew out of Nigeria empty after dropping their cargoes. In 2016, Mr. Wola, the chief executive officer, CEO of Global Good Agricultural Practice Global GAP, approved and certified ABX World as the first member of Global GAP with a Nigerian identity. Global GAP is the present day world governing, training, and certification body for global good agricultural practices, and ultimately certified agricultural produces meant for export. They are advocates for good quality, quality food production and the sustenance of food safety for international market consumers. Captain John T. Okapu, by his excellent co corporate agricultural vision and technical expertise in global GAP, global good agrarian practice, productivity tradition and standards, is today listed as a pioneer member of global GAP and the only certified local gap owner in Nigeria. Is the lead advocate of agricultural revolution in Nigeria, the host custodian of global GAP and TWG, Nigeria and Nigeria Agro Exporters Group, which he funded as a result of bad policies hindering the development and growth of agriculture in the country. So I hereby welcome Captain John Ukapu, chairman of the Nigeria Agro Committee on AFCTA. To our miss today, thank you for honoring us. We appreciate your presence. Uh, meanwhile, Tommy and um, Sheyi, please mute everybody so that we can have a very quality, valuable time with Captain John Okapo. You are welcome, sir. You have the floor. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lady K. And uh, first of all, I have to thank uh, Professor Femi Boyde. He's been a very long time friend of mine, and um, he's been part of the struggle. 
Lady K, I will say thank you very much for inviting me and I'm looking forward to share my experience and see what I can do in terms of knowledge sharing to my fellow Nigerians. I'm very, very happy to be here. Thank you. And um, October actually happened to be January of agricultural calendar. You know, like January or every year we celebrate New Year. October happened to be our January. And um, based on um, that, most of our activities we have on ground right now has to be in line with the global practices. I have this picture I'm going to give to you. It's about seven pages, but I'm going to try and move as fast as possible to cover it up. Then before we go into the presentation, uh, Mr. Boyd, the prof, um, I send a copy of it to you. And, yes, I will um, have it. You can share it anyway. And if anybody needs a copy, please do give them a one. Give them one. Um, let me start from the beginning. It's a speech made by Captain John T. Okapo for the Talking Trade and Investment Global webinar on Saturday, 8th of October, 2022. The team is rebuilding a new economic future for Nigeria agro-exports to the rescue. The importance and the efficacy of agro-export activities to quickly turn around the economic fortune of this of this great country and the world cannot be overemphasized. This is because people will always eat and countries mostly do not or are unable to produce enough for their population. Hence, the volume of exportation of food around the world is a uh, humongous. Besides, the exported agricultural commodities are exchanged for dollars, which is very scarce now in Nigeria, and mainly responsible for the badly degenerating nature of our economy. Thus, the dire need for Nigerians to massively engage in agro-export to improve our economy and escalate economic growth. Netherlands, with a population of about 17.2 million, people is earning over $112 billion of agricultural export year, while Nigeria with over 200 million people can do 10 times of that income. Netherlands does not have good weather and soil with only land mass of about 42,000 square kilometer. That is a nation below sea level. On the other hand, Nigeria has about 923,000 square kilometers of total land mass and endowed with good weather and good soil. What are we doing with it? Practically nothing. Now, African Continental Free Trade Agreement intends to change the narratives. It has created the world's largest free trade area representing the 1.2 billion customers, cost, uh, consumer market, and mandate states to remove tariffs, non-tariff, in order to increase shipments and service between nations that will boost economic growth in so doing. As it is now, we will continue to export our product to the world market through other countries. I'm talking about Nigeria, and definitely, it will get worse under African continental free trade. For every one Naira we are going to make, those countries, our product and transiting will make like 10 Naira in every one Naira we make. There's no short court here or lobbying. It's a grassroots. That, those grassroots are the farmers with certification and traceability of their farms and product. Unfortunately, Nigerian farmers and those in the agricultural value chain do not possess the requisite international accepted certificates and traceability to meet the requirements of the exporting countries that will qualify them to engage in African continental free trade. This is coupled with the high logistic and regulatory costs and astronomically interest rates on loan 
those issues need to be redressed for Nigeria to actively participate and benefit from African continental free trade. If you look at the trend, Africa exports agricultural produce such as rock, tomato, onions, vegetable, cocoa, coffee, cotton, yam, tobacco, and the rest of them to the world to end significant foreign exchange. But the continent imports imports uh, imports important foods such as cereal, vegetable oil, dairy, products, and meat in large quantity. Why do we have to keep importing things that we can ordinarily be exporting? That's what this area is trying to uh, clear up. This is worse in Nigeria due to our shortcomings as regard to agro exports. Our neighboring countries have positioned themselves to benefit from African continental free trade by building robust value added and logistic cost effective export system. Now you look at all the farmers we have in Nigeria today, they are not positioned to sell any of their product to the world market. I'm going to come to that during the presentation whereby most of our products go through either Mexico, go to Ghana, go to India. It's a very shameful situation. So looking at it critically, our logistic costs inadequately value added system lack of um, requisite certifications and traceability cemented our losses on African continental free trade. I spoke several times last year and early this year about the cost of logistics into um, in our export um, business. One of the one, one of the area that's really, really, really that need to be, uh, something needs to be done is the debt of um, the air freight. Government taxes, government fees, and coupled with regulatory agencies and choked up system at the port. Um, I brought in a hundred ton aircraft out of Ghana. I spent $3,800 to pay in fees and taxes just on the flight to Europe. The same 100 ton we brought it to Lagos. After calculation, we are spending about $35,000. Where do we go from there? So these are part of the areas we are looking critically and we are working so very seriously to overcome. Let me go to the certificates and traceability. Unfortunately, there's a growing awareness and um, insistence on ensuring the traceability and international acceptance certification of agro produce to be received by most countries these days. Nigerian farmers, aggregators, and exporters have been unable to meet up with such standards. You want to sell your products, you want to sell your market to the world market. You have no standards, you have no certification, nobody can trace you when anything goes wrong. This inability has led to the most embarrassing rejections and sometimes destruction of our agro commodities in foreign markets. That is well known. To make matter most worse in some quarters in Nigeria, some people believe that lobbying and negotiation or bilateral agreements it's an express way to export and agricultural commodities to the export destination countries. This believe in some quarters that once a country has a trade and bilateral agreement with another, it guarantees free flow of agro products. Yes, such agreements open the doors to free trade between countries for mutual benefits, but there is a caveat that's that's a question that needs to be taken care of. That's an issue that needs to be taken care of here that will ensure that advanced country will only accept quality agricultural products. When we're talking about quality, we're talking about quality of products that can be traceable with international recognized good agricultural practice. A responsible country wouldn't because of trade agreement allow poison or substandard product into their country to kill its citizens. Nigeria has entered into several trade agreements, but our goods are still being rejected by the same countries we have bilateral trade agreement with. Why? Because our agricultural products are not certified and traceable. Similarly, source certification and traceability are not established from nothing or by the government. The main agricultural producers have over the years 
experience the real reason for rejections of their products and taking steps to correct such issues by having international acceptable and recognized gap certification that will now establish national standards to be adhered to. Some time ago, some Nigerian officials went to Ghana to go and see what they are doing right in order for us Nigerians to copy. And when you go to Ghana, go to other places to study, you have to come back and do exactly what they did. But in Nigeria, that's not the case. In view of the above, the Honorable Minister of Trade, Honorable Minister, uh, Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, and the instance of the President established Nigerian Agro Export Setup Committee in July of 2020 to, amongst other things, standardize, mobilize, and improve agro export activities in Nigeria with active collaboration with the ministries, departments, and agencies, the military, and top players in agro export subsector. The committee immediately swung into action by identifying reasons for the agro rejections and the provision of sustainable and holistic solution to mitigate what the, the reasons and the problem. Hence, the four points agenda was established. Four points agenda was established as a lasting remedy for agro export rejections of our agro commodities in foreign markets. The four points agenda as given, one, global gap certification and traceability. The lack of international and reliable global gap certification standard has made it mostly impossible for Nigeria to carry out unhindered and safe agricultural export activities as a result of widespread lack of global gap certification among farmers and agro export operators in Nigeria. Consequently, we will start with the global gap training of 1,000 youths, women, and farmers in all seven and seven, 774 local governments in Nigeria. This is captured in component two of our project appraisal report that I will share with you later. Global gap traceability training and certification of all farmers and those in agricultural value chain in Nigeria. Then we're looking at the QR code card registration for all farmers and those in agricultural value chain. The QR code is part of the traceability program. Concurrently, why continue with the training program? We will affect the registration of all the trainee youths, women, and farmers in the QR codes that will contain a particular that will contain their particulars. GPS farm location, cross-planted and sold, and so on. This guy beside this card, the QR code card, beside being able to trace a farmer, off takers can be used to locate the farmers and vice versa. It can also aid the banking and credit facility of the same farmer. Tech platform. This is where the fun starts. Use of technology platform in all agro export activities in Nigeria to simplify the process, making the one-stop state of the process and drastically reduce the process time for agro-export. It's a one-stop shopping program that um, must have to be in place. Today in Ghana, when you want to export any product out of Ghana or maybe Kenya or some of these countries, you go to the system, you pick out what you have to do, and after you enter a lot of um, what you're looking for with the push of a button, you are in business. It's not so here in Nigeria. As a matter of fact, when you try it here in Nigeria, you won't even know where to start from. We have more than 17 agencies, every single one of them claiming constitutional rights, claiming uh, jurisdictional rights of what you are about to do. Now, the tech platform is a user interface for major participants in value chain with roles and responsibility. One, the farm, aggregators, transporters, regulators, just like CBN, Federal Ministry of Trade and Industry, like the CA, CED and MPIS, Federal Ministry of Agriculture, FMAD, that's under uh, Nigerian Agriculture Quarantine Service, Veterinary and others, Customs, NDLA, NAVDAC, Port Authority, and so on. Industries here like you and I, and the, um, and the committee set up by the government, the off-takers, banks, and lenders. Access point integration with the system of the various regulators and participants and facilitators. Functionality of for smart information dissemination and alerts for users' transaction. 
integration with payment platform for finance related transaction, access point for global gap certification related activities, single point process um, dashboard for agro export from documentation to ship out. Ease of onboarding for new users utilizing relevant smart devices, a reporting functions for data analytic, material tracking, APU, agro processing units. Agro processing units, building agricultural process units to increase the gain of standards and value added in exports. African Development Bank. We are looking forward for them to support this program. Uh, we have an existing program with them coming up under SAPZ program, under SAPZ. And the Federal Minister of Agriculture, they're trying to um, unlock the system right now. October, this month, they're going to launch SAPZ program in Nigeria. They're starting off with about um, eight locations. We have from South, 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 you have Cross River. You have Southeast, you have uh, Imo State. Southwest, you have Oyo State and Ogun State. North Central, you have Kwara State and um, Abuja. Northwest, you have Kano and Kaduna. So these are the part of the area they're starting under the SAPZ program. Unfortunately, there is none for South Northeast for now. And this is just stage, stage one. The second stage of it is coming. But for a state to participate in any of the stages, you have to be able to have expression of interest. The facility is there, the funds are there, and the funds have already been backed up and guaranteed by the federal government as per the information reaching us. Now, um, African the Global Bank and uh, enable private sector through the Nigerian Agro Export Setup Committee. We are working to synergize and benefit uh, with the benefits of the state government to build agricultural processing units and agro transformation center to process raw agricultural produce to value added, safe, certify, well-packaged products. In this APUs, research and development will continually be carried out for the improvement of products, packaging, and other necessary requirements. Now, let me come to this area. A lot of people believe that um, packaging is our problem. Packaging is not our problem. You can't package poison and send to somebody. Our problem is the farmers. We have to get our farmers in order. We have to train our farmers to produce the right goods. Packaging can be done and will be done at the uh, processing units. Now, the National Interpretation Guideline. What is National Interpretation Guideline? The National Interpretation Guideline is a document which provides a guidance on the implementation and auditing of compliance of a country's interpretation of global gap the compliance criteria and um, compliance criteria are based on which the country interpretation is developed. The global gap control points are fixed and are not to be changed. The national interpretation guideline is more like a Bible. It's what's where we're going to have the do's and the don'ts. What do you have to do and what you don't have to do? So the country interpretation in the NIG document is always conjunction with the global gap, CPCC, and cannot stand alone. The country system in terms of our policies, in terms of regulatory system, has to be incorporated in the national interpretation guideline for it to be a working document. Where there is no country specific addition to the CC, which serves for better understanding and implementation, the original CC are valid and should not be repeated in the country interpretation, uh, interpretation column. We are looking forward to resolve the problem of beans in Nigeria. That is the good news I told Mr. Um, Mr. Femi. We've worked very hard over the months and now we're about to unlock whatever we have been doing. We are looking forward to resolve the problem of beans and work with, um, of beans and work with relevant MDAs to leave demand in different markets around the world. Hopefully, we will get all the necessary support and cooperation with the relevant ministries and agencies to make this happen. The issue of beans, I believe, in the next one month will be a thing of the past. 
because we have already processed what the international market need and the reason why the beans was banned in Nigeria. The ban of the exportation of beans from Nigeria has been very tummy and frustrating issue that has persisted for years now, making it difficult for the nation to show up its foreign exchange earning. Dear Nigerians, again, we are looking forward to put an end to the nightmare within the next one month. As long as the agencies and the government officials cooperate with us, um, the issue of beans will be history. We are looking forward to follow up with that of dry fish too, that the process is already too in place. In conclusion, before I go to my presentation, once the formation four points agenda are implemented, our economy will rapidly improve and our agro-export inflow alone will far exceed that of crude oil. We estimated that agro-export inflow alone will be about $250 billion by the year 2040. So for, um, we're going to go over to the presentation, then I can take some of the points that I didn't mention in terms of um, what I just said in the speech here. So I'm looking forward to Fermi to share the, um, to share the screen please, so that um, we can go from one point to the other. The presentation made by Captain John for the rebuilding um, a new economic future for Nigeria and um, agro export to the rescue, certification and traceability. Can you go to the next one, please? Um, today, we have about 15 cargo airports in Nigeria today. And what they all have in mind, it has to do with agricultural export. And as I speak to you, not even one single kilo goes out of those airports. We intend to make these airports functional. And for that to happen, we have to need the collaboration of the government. Okay. Um, the government, they will have to make the good policy for us to make use of those airports. Some of these airports are not the politicians building of airports has become the end and everybody's building cargo airports and most of them now are determined to be agro-export. We intend to put these airports into practical use. Okay, and but for, us, that, for that to happen, we need the collaboration of the government. Next, please. And uh, from the program we have in place from the ex committees set up by the government, we intend to afford about some um, 240 million tons of agro-export by the year 2040. How possible is this? We're looking about the, um, the production capacity in different states in Nigeria. Niger states and KB, they have a lot of wetlands and I believe these two states alone can even surpass our projection, but we try to hold on to a very constructive figure in terms of what our set goal is. Next, please. But this, what we are doing for it to be possible in our program in Nigeria, the government have to build a bridge for us to cross. I've over the years trying to get some few things done right. And over the years, I ran into a lot of stumbling block. Most government and most government agencies and ministry, they believe that they are the one that will control. They are the one that will drive most of the program. And I keep telling most of them when I get up such an attitude that, Agricultural export is 100% private sector. The government creates the enable environment, the private sector drives it. But I've been in a situation whereby I was even ordered that one of the office in the ministry have to be where everything has to be driven. If I don't like it, I should go to hell. And um, it was very painful, but it took me at least six months to overcome that area. Then if you look at uh, the next slide, it's something I discussed earlier about the um, issue we're having out of logistics. 100 ton of cargo out of Ghana, we pay about uh, $4,000 out of Nigeria, 35,000. With this alone, our products cannot be affordable in the world market, that's for sure. Next, please. I was in London not too long ago, two kg of pineapple from Costa Rica. Costa Rica is 12 hours from London and they're selling for about 
95p to 1 pound 10 in most supermarkets. Two kg of pineapple, logistic cost alone from Nigeria to UK is 1 pound 7. How do you sell your pineapple? It's impossible. We have certification right now to airlift pineapple to UK and we can do that. Every night, Canada do about 620 ton. In Nigeria, we can boast of 20 ton a week. This is over 250,000 billion, uh, 250 billion dollar worth of economy wasting away. Next, please. We're talking about the global gap certification on which I said, um, I talked on my speech. We need this for us to be able to move Nigeria forward. If you can't trace your product, nobody's willing to touch it. McDonald's, Burger King, they are not in Nigeria today because if they come in here, anything you supply them, you can't trace it. And that's one of the reasons why they are not here. This is part of the training program. This is a training actually in Sokoto. Uh, we'll do it on Global Gap Awareness. Uh, we believe that uh, in the next two years, at least we can be able to train about three, 4,000 farmers to be able to meet up to Global Gap um, certification and traceability. Once that training is done, we have off-takers that can off-take our product. Most of the aircraft that flies into Nigeria can go back with something, okay? And um, also two aircraft that are coming from neighboring countries can come to Nigeria and off-leave their products. Okay, next please. Over 60% of the land in communities in Europe European Union and United Kingdom have been destroyed by wildfire. We can feed UK, Europe, we can feed the world. Why are we suffering? Look at what's going on in um, Ukraine and Russia. I don't have to take, tell you that much about it. Please, can you go to the next slide? The QR code cards I explained earlier on the four point agenda. This is one of the tools that we need to be able to um, move agricultural export in Nigeria. We need to be able to trace people that are selling things to you. If you can't trace them, you're going nowhere. Then the global gap traceability is still there. The next please. The use of technology platform, which I explained earlier on my speech. Next please. And the APUs that will be able to process whatever we are shipping out of Nigeria. On, in this APU, we're going to have both NAVDAC, you're going to have all the agencies, you have customs, all the required agencies and organizations will be there, the lab to test the equipment, the product that we're exporting. And most of this APU will be in, uh, just within a few minutes away from exit point, like the airport and the seaport. Okay, so we are looking forward to put this APU and at least in all the whole capital um, states in Nigeria and possible local governments. On the APUs, we're going to have value added programs on it in terms of uh, juice, wine, and other things, okay? Next, please. Especially meats and poultry and poultry. When you bring in McDonald's to Nigeria, you have to be able to process the meats and the patties they need for their hamburgers. Next, please. Okay, this is about ABX wall. Then you can go to the next, please. It's about ABX world. You can go to the next, please. Next, please. Okay, on the global gap training of certification, please, you need to, this, this is where every one of us have to get together and work at one. Kenya today has about 3,000 certifications to be able to sell to the world market. Ghana has about 2,000, South Africa. Cameroon, Nigeria is zero. We need to be able to sit up and start training our farmers to certify them to do what others are doing. There's no shortcut. Everybody wants to sell their product to the world market. And at the end of it, nobody accepts it. Um, we have a lot of onions today living um, somewhere in Kebi and Sokoto. They go to Ghana, they go to Senegal and other places. What is the reason we don't have what it takes to sell our product to the world market and that have to change very soon. Next please. It's time to correct all this anomaly if we are ready as people to join the global market. Thank you very much. Wow, 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 wow. 
<laughs> this was the fastest presentation we have had. Uh, apparently, you merged your present presentation with a speech, which is really, really powerful. Thank you so, so very much for the quality time you have spent with us today. Uh, pass the microphone now to Ibrahim Aruna. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Captain John. Um, Kapu. Thank you, our moderator. I think uh, you did um, a good job. Uh, but I'm just going to quickly go over the uh, summary of what I, what I capture. I'm not going to go over all your notes, right? But I think the most important thing is um, we all know the problems, right? At least, and you have also captured those issues. You know, you, you start from sharing your experience in terms of comparing Nigeria with, uh, with Netherlands, right? Uh, Netherlands with uh, small landmass, uh, poor weather, and they're able to produce a lot to feed the world. But we have a huge uh, landmass, but we're not able to do that. And part of the problem you mentioned were relating to um, what we're producing, what our farmers is producing, it's not even enough to be able to feed ourselves, not to talk of exporting. But you also mentioned the issue of um, um, traceability and also certification. You know, you, you mentioned that issue where our farmers uh, cannot be traceable, you know, where the optical, you can't even trace them, right? And that created a huge issue. It created a huge issue that is a blocker. You also mentioned about uh, the bilateral trade agreement. You know, with so many countries, even though we have that, we have those agreements, but because of this traceability issue, uh, it's a huge blockers that does not allow us to be able to do much. And you went for that to talk about uh, in 2020, the Ministry of Agri set up uh, some committee, um, agro export committee to be able to look into how can we solve this problem? Right? How can we get out of this uh, um, and, and create an economy where uh, we get a lot of um, um, money from agri, ag agro export? And they came up with committee and the committee came up with four agenda. And those four agenda talk about uh, the global traceability certification, uh, training, uh, QR code, uh, GPS farm location, and how can we ensure that we get all those things sorted out, right? You also stress one big issue that we all thought is actually one of the problems, the issue of uh, packaging, right? And you let us know that the issue is not really packaging, right? But uh, our farm actually producing the right food, right? Again, mm -hmm. and and that is a, a huge one as well. Uh, you also talk about the ongoing work to actually uh, remove the ban of uh, the beans from Nigeria, and which if if we're able to get that sorted out, it's going to uh, be a, a, a lot of um, um, it's going to solve a lot of it's going to solve the problems, right? And we can export our beans. You talk about how we have 15 cargo airports, and out of all these airports, none of them is actually exporting any agro products. And mm -hmm. we need to be able to solve that. Um, you talk about how expensive it is to, to export from Nigeria. You, you, you compare when we have to spend um, outside Nigeria as cheap as $4,000, but in Nigeria, you have to spend 35000 which doesn't make any sense. And At all. by the time you actually take get our product out there, we're not able to make any profit, right? So those are a lot of issues that need to be solved. And um, you also talk about um, in your presentation, you just, you've, you've captured a lot of things that I haven't mentioned. The issue of optical, the training, the disability, the technology, uh, agro processing, and also making sure that mm -hmm. we, now we don't have any certification, right? In the global trade and certification, where uh, a country as small as Kenya has over 3,000 and Nigeria has none, right? So, that's yeah. part of the thing you mentioned. So, um, I'm going to stop here and I think there are some questions that we're going to, um, that I believe that they're going to ask you. Thank you. Thank you so very much for capturing everything. Um, I have Innocent uh, Opano. I can't see the, okay, Innocent Opano, your hand is raised up. You have mm -hmm. a question or a comment? And I see Johnny Simide after that. You are very welcome, our mm. loyal attendee. Uh, Bosutu Larry will be the next after John. 
So innocent, if your camera is okay, you can turn it on. Otherwise, please, you have the floor. Okay. Um, good, good, good evening, all. Good evening. Yeah, my name is Innocent Okpanum. I'm actually an architect. Okay. But uh, also, as an architect, as you know very well, um, we are involved in all facets of uh, business development in, in all over the world, in any, in any, in any system. Okay, Without you have two minutes. Of, okay. So okay. the key issue here is this. Nigeria has a very huge potential. And the captain has made a very strong point, looking at how can all these certifications that he mentioned, how can it be resolved as soon as possible? Because, you know, we have a, one serious problem that we know, the pro we know what are the issues, but unfortunately, the officials who will be who should be able to you know tackle this in a focused manner tend to be all over the show and at the end of the at the end of the day nothing is done mm -hmm. food our food uh, and that we have currently are all something that we know that is world best class food we have you mentioned about netherlands yes i know netherlands very well and most of the agri produces are vertical what does that mean they build these greenhouses up to seven stories and 10 stories, which also they are doing. What does that mean? That it's not that natural. It's genetically modified produce, which they sell to people, which we know what it leads to. So Nigeria has a huge advantage because our products are organic. At the end of the day, what I'm asking Captain to explain, how can this thing be certified as soon as possible so at least Nigeria can actually occupy the space in the global trading agri industry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much. I will go ahead with uh, Johnny Semide. We're going to take uh, two questions at a time. Johnny Semide, you have the floor. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you very much, um, Lady K. Yes, sir. I'm my, I'm my friend, John. Uh, Captain John Otaku. The interesting thing is that I worked on this project with John Otaku about three, four years ago. Yeah. We bear the same name and we were born the same day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are correct. <laughs> we were born the same day. Uh, yeah. The interesting thing is that uh, I want to show, share my practical experience. This time last week, I was in Italy. What was I working on? We are talking of the Africa continental free trade and the Mediterranean region of Europe shares border with Morocco and all that. Definitely things will come in. And when we look at the produce uh, business, that is vegetable and all that in the UK, Judas is carrot uh, office in Manchester and all that. I discovered that we are not ready. And the truth of the matter is that when some of us are talking, people will label us as bad people, that we are the people that is not making government officials to make money. Mm -hmm. I have mm -hmm. traveled around the continent of Africa, across the globe, mm -hmm. with my own money. And Boyede was part of the UNIDO project of NQIP. What we discovered was that the reason why people are taking our produce to Ghana to this is because the gap is not there, traceability is not there, and there is no structure. And when you are saying it, government officials will tell you to keep quiet. And exactly. We did, we you are correct. Job. We travel. We didn't know whether there was Boko Haram, whether was it. We travel around the we travel around this country for a period of three, four, five years. We were on that NQIC, NQIP. We submitted the report to government. As I'm talking to you now, the the product, the thing is still gathering draws, the, what we came out with, export controls, conduit okay. of excellence, how to work with stakeholders from the uh, upstream, midstream, and uh, downstream in a handshake, what we call disability mechanism. As I'm talking to you now, nobody is listening. The interesting mm -hmm. thing is that I was in Kenya, I was in Nigeria here, and I was in Ghana. And I told the world that why they are rejecting our product 
one, documentation. Okay. Two, the high cost of doing business. When okay. you talk of ease of doing business or executive order, one to anything, it's just a paperwork. The Thank truth you. of the matter is that if you go to the airport today, my friend gave you 35 US dollars. 35 US dollars is on the lower side. What are the cost of documentation? 20, 20 naira per kg and all that. If you do a simple arithmetic, it is more than 50 US dollars. Ghana okay. is less than 4,000 US dollars. Why Kenya is zero? So Kenya, we carry about 20 aircraft to U the European Union in a day. Uh, Madagascar, we move beans 12, 12 hours to, to the European Union, Nigeria zero. And Thank we, you, are, sir. we are the experts in the world. So the truth <laughs> of the matter is that let us put our house in order. Let the okay. government of each sometimes say you. to us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, if you are speaking and you hear me interjecting, I'm saying, okay, thank you. That means you need to land them. Thank you so very much. I know we can go on and on with the journey. Semi day is so knowledgeable. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I yield the floor to Captain while um, Bodusu um, build Bodusu Bodusu. and uh, Molara Akonjiwa, you get ready. Okay. So I yield the floor to Femi Boyede and uh, Captain. It's not the speaker, but okay, thank you. Captain, um, go ahead. thank go ahead, you Femi. again for a very, very erudite presentation. And sorry that I put you under uh, time pressure. Uh, the problem with uh, people like uh, Captain John um, and then John Isemede and one Mr. Olufem Boede that I know is that once they start on this thing that is <laughs> not just known to them, but that is of concern to their hearts, the, yeah. it, it's like yeah. trying to stop a moving train. You a find it difficult to, uh, to, to stop us. But honestly, thank you. And um, even for the speed at which you uh, rounded up the presentation. One, no, two things that I want to bring up, and I'm sure Captain will uh, have uh, an opinion on both. Certifications are necessary. In fact, they are sine qua non in terms of uh, uh, export trade. But we have not got even the single, uh, the only one that uh, the government is in charge of. We haven't gotten it right. Every diff, uh, every uh, individual uh, event, uh, webinar, um, talk show that I am either convening or participating in, the complaint is about how to get NAVDAQ approval for people who want to export out of Nigeria. Now, with global gap and all of this, I am thinking, and I'm not uh, encouraging rebellion or that we should ignore the government. I am thinking that the private sector driven certification processes might actually be much faster than what NAVDAQ uh, is uh, uh, imposing on Nigeria, it might actually become a solution. The theme of today's event is agro exports to the rescue. So maybe we want yes. to rescue government from itself by exactly. making sure as private sector that we perfect that which we are doing. Long ago, um, 2007, 2008, I was in charge of economic development in Ekiti State. I was SA to the governor. And we did send a team to Ghana to go and understudy a pineapple farm, just pineapple farm, only to find out that I was in a, 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 a young Nigerian who actually moved to Ghana to go and establish that 40 hectare farm where KLM was picking pineapples on a nightly basis to the Netherlands. We haven't gotten it right. So the second point I want to talk about Nigeria Export Promotion Council in those days had what they call state committees on export promotion. Captain, I want to suggest that in your next engagement with Dr. Yakusak or with uh, Otumbani Adebayo or all those places, you know, you guys in those corridors of uh, high, high places, please, I think it is time that not just to revive them, 
not for subvention and budgetary purposes, but to work with the kinds of initiatives that you and Nigeria Agro Exporters Forum have already packaged. The plan is there, the strategy is there. How to now bring them into it? Because Nigeria remains a government-led economy. Mm -hmm. And unless government is the one supporting the uh, this thing, it's like what your boss will say, uh, John, mm -hmm. that particular proverb ad 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 addresses you, uh, I mean, John Isemede, and all of us who have been on the train. All we are saying is that we have idea. We don't get power. We don't mm -hmm. get the biro to take, mm -hmm. let these ideas come to be. But I believe that collaborating and making them see. And that's the reason why I went back, my mind went back to the existence and the funding by Nigeria Export Promotion Council on state committees on export promotion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. So as I bring him in again, I just echo what uh, Prime Minister uh, Prime Minister of India said of recent, he said the government has no business to be in business. No business. Exactly. <laughs> Just to echo your so I yield the floor to you. Captain. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, um, like I stated in most of my presentation, our problem is certification and traceability. That's it. I want to bring in my aircraft. I want to fill it up. We have buyers that will buy our product, but if you cannot trace any product where it's coming from, you can't touch it. Mm -hmm. Like I spoke to the franchise manager for McDonald's, that was in Lima, Peru. I went to that program, Agro Summit. She personally begged me to come back to my country, see what we can do about traceability and certification. They are ready to come in here and spend billions of dollars to establish the system in terms of getting their meat paddy, getting their vegetables and other things. But the government have to help us, just like Mr. Uh, Femi Boyer, they said. They have to come in here. We are not coming in to drive, I mean, to create policy. Because once we once they hear private sector, most of these government officials, they, get, they, they, be, they become afraid. It took me 12 years to get to the point where I am right now. Ordinarily, it's not supposed to take me up to that uh, more than two years. But I spent the other 10 years trying to overcome the aggression of civil servants. It is terrible. In most cases, Professor it, Simon Itwange is not here. In most cases, if they don't get their way, they will destroy you, whatever you are doing. And once that happens, you have to go right around to see how you can get it active. I am the kind of a person I refuse to go down. I don't take failure for an answer. As long as it's going to be good for our people, I will fight you until we get that thing done. Today, I can gladly and happily tell you, in the next one month, the issue of beans being banned from Nigeria will be history. I can comfortably tell you that. You take it, take it as a take home. We have done so much to overcome the banning of beans and also that of dry fish. But the problem now, how do we get the cooperation and the support of the government. That is actually the problem, period. But as far as getting beans out of the ban list, we are ready to go. We've grown the beans based on the specification of what they want. We've, the beans are by Tuesday, Wednesday, the laboratory analysis will be out and we'll publish it to the whole world. But now the government have to play a major role here. They are the bridge builder. If they don't build the bridge, we can't cross it. And that is what we are facing. Okay. Through today. Uh, somebody mentioned about we don't grow enough food in Nigeria. We grow enough food. We have more than enough. According to United Nations, 75% of the food we grow in Nigeria waste. 75%. So we're only dealing with 25%. If that is an issue we have to deal with, we have enough to eat and we have enough to sell to the world market. But the problem, we are not positioned to do any of this. Okay. I said earlier about certification and traceability, how many in Nigeria? We have zero, although we have one. That one happened to be in pineapple. But still, the, the farmer with that single certification can still not export their product. 
Um, coming in terms of local gap, shop right. Let me clear it today to Nigerians. ShopRite is a member of Global Gap. If you walk into any ShopRite today in Nigeria and see any Nigerian product there, they force them to take it. Ordinarily, they're not supposed to be there. We alone here in Nigeria alone, your supply to ShopRite, Spa, and all that this thing can put a lot of people to work. But the government have to work with the private sector. The private sector is they are the drivers of the economy. The public sector, it creates the policy. UK trade investments, if you go to Article 7 of their policy, they say they deal with 100% private sector. And that is something public se uh, uh, sector here, government officials here don't want to hear. As long as they're not going to get involved, forget it. And that has been the problem. We all have to put hands together to overcome this. We, need, we the private sector, have to drive the economy, especially in agro-export. And um, Mr. Femi Boyer Day, um, I met him once in Nigerian, uh, Nigerian Export Promotion Council. Um, they were doing some kind of training and not training. And that reminds me of NAVDAC. NAVDAC, they have the most sophisticated equipment on earth. Are they mm -hmm. recognized? No. NAVDAC is not recognized anywhere on earth. Anywhere. Not even in Togo, not even in Republic of Benin. Go tell them I said so. NAVDAC have the best equipment on earth, but they are not being, they are not audited. So at the end of it, this equipment means nothing. I have some, uh, somebody, an official of Nigerian government that was going to Geneva with the family. They have GALA, GALA approved by NAVDAC. On getting to Geneva, the Geneva official refused for them to go inside Geneva with GALA. This is GALA for personal use. Guess what happened? They have to eat those all those gala at the airport or put it in the trash. At the end of it, they ate it there. So now that we need to sit up, get those equipment they have audited by either EU, by US, by UK authority. Once they audit it, they put it into the system. I'm an airline pilot, I fly airplane. There's some certain requirements we need to get by the EU to fly cargo. If you're if we are not certified to fly cargo into EU. You can't go there. You cannot take one single kg of any cargo from Nigeria to any European nation or UK without being on ACC3. I know what it took us to get ourselves on ACC3, both Sakon, NACO, my company, some airline. We spend money to get audited and certified. Now that got to do the same or else, Togo, Bene, Cameroon will not recognize them. And they are not. This is not emotion, this is not sentiment. I just have to say, the way it is, so that we can sit up. Okay. Okay. So that's basically what it is for now. Next, mm, please. Thank, thank you for now. So, Bosun Sholari. Thank next. you, lady. Thank you, lady. <laughs> K. Good evening. Nice but please, let me just you, beg you. I'm not going to stay long, but I have a few questions about three. Uh, Captain John, good evening. Two minutes. It's, mm -hmm. it's good nice evening. meeting you here again. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. Femi Boye, ah, thank you for giving us this okay, opportunity. Okay, that's my we... very good friend. Boss, yes, how are you? <laughs> I'm okay, thank you. <laughs> good evening. One, <laughs> after the training on GAP, who bears the cost? Hmm. Is it the program or the people? If they have to bear the cost, it is expensive. Pamela Coca Milton said within the week during uh, a seminar that when we raise this type of question, that it is government of each country that has to bear the cost of certification because they collect taxes. That when mm -hmm. you leave it for people, she said there's nothing she can do because when you leave it for the people, the people cannot pay for it and your goods will keep being rejected. Number two, you are a mover and a shaker within the aviation industry. How are you going to checkmate all the sad things that pass through NACO? Because <laughs> if you get what you are going to do and you get it done, and through NACO, they are still carrying so many junks. Those things can begin to destroy the image that you have helped to build. Uh, value addition. For now, the country needs a lot of commodities to move out for us to get some foreign exchange. But yes. value addition is, is value addition is the I mean is the totality of everything we're saying because that's where we will make the money. And by the time these people keeps getting our commodities, 
they may not allow our value added products to fly. They won't take it for several reasons. Thank you for what you have said about NAVDAC. And NAVDAC will still make us pay 90,000. Now the government have removed them <laughs> from funding. Then we're in trouble because from 90,000, they may ask us to pay 300. And lastly, civil servants, like your last statement, if we all come together as private sectors, those who are feeling this pain because it's our monies that are being wasted. Thank There's you. nothing any civil servant can do. We can check corruption out of them. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. I'll let uh, Omolara Konji also speak, then uh, Femi Boyede and uh, Captain will do justice. Yeah, to the yeah, I, need, I, need to take, I need to take one of these answers before I forget what I have to do, uh, the answer to it, especially on the training cost. The training cost. On that oh. of the training, we have, we have established some certain... Um, program here in Nigeria to reduce the cost of training. Initially, it can cost about it about 430,000 Naira for first stage of training. That cost of 430,000 Naira, we've reduced it to about 55,000 now because what we did is to train Nigerians to be the trainer. We have quite a few Nigerians now. We have Tokwe, we have uh, Daniel and uh, Mrs. Uh, Adeoye and others. So we've trained some Nigerians and we're going to train let more Nigerians to bring the cost down. But for that to kick off, because it's, it's still new in our system, the government have to come in to create a noble environment by starting this program. When people started seeing the importance of the training and the, and the uh, benefit of it, they will join. Okay, And the good part of it is that once we train you, once you are trained, you will get an immediate three years contract to supply what you've been trained on. The off takers are there waiting. Okay, that's basically okay, what then, it is. So uh, go ahead. Okay. Let me also, uh, just by way of information, uh, on this same uh, platform, uh, Dr. Ezra Yakusak, the ED of NEPC, actually gave us a certain number, just a little above, I think, 8,000 that time, that the Nigeria Export Promotion Council has uh, uh, supported. Uh, by writing off the cost of uh, obtaining a few certificates. I know the HA, uh, HACCP and all of it. So NEPC, I believe, under the current leadership, takes the issue of certification very seriously. And I believe that, OK, when I'm back, uh, Captain John, uh, we put heads together and see how to um, also still engage with them to see if they can actually increase the responsibility they are taking uh, to, uh, I mean, expand their export readiness support to include uh, global gap uh, certification. Okay. I'm also aware that the current leadership of the Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency of MSME has um, also now uh, 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 imbibed the uh, uh, imperative to support the micro, small, and medium enterprises with just more than the usual enterprise development training. They have now also set up an export support unit, which is also looking into the issue of uh, documentations and certifications to support MSMEs. Again, okay. Captain, um, on behalf of the SMEs, we will talk about this and see. How to, uh, right, thank you very much. I'm looking forward okay, to thank you. you. So I have uh, Omalara Konji next, please. Th thank, thank you, Lady K. I, I'm, I'm going, to, I'm going to be very brief. Okay. I thank uh, the all the all the subject uh, matters uh, experts. What they have submitted, they are very correct. But my point is this policy inconsistency and the policy system assaults that we have. Everything that the captain had mentioned that have been put in place, we are going into a new election. Uh, let us find a way of tying their hands, not to somersault this policy, because the civil servant can be very funny. You, you mentioned shop rights. I happen to be the person who approved shop rights uh, foreign exchange transaction with the condition that most of the commodities must be taken from Nigeria. The moment I left the seat, they changed the policy. This policy, some assault, has to be addressed. That's my point. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much for respecting the time. That's <laughs> thank and you. I really the appreciate it. Benefit of uh, participants so that you don't think that the person who spoke is just speaking off the cuff. Dr. Mrs. Omolara Akonji was the head of the Trade and Exchange Department of Central Bank of Nigeria for several years. 
Wow. And most of what operates or operated that increased Nigeria's export, uh, um, uh, uh, Nigeria's export performance were actually okay. rolled out from her table. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Okay, uh, Lady Kay, uh, let me chip in one. Let me chip in one, one problem we have too. Uh, somebody mentioned about CBN. CBN policy is really hot in agricultural. Some of their policies are hot in agricultural export program in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Most of the exports out of Ghana is because people are trying to dodge CBN policy. But we're yes. coming to do something about that. Okay? So the, the monetary policy have to change, period. Thank you so very much. I'm going to take some questions. Um, number one, are we producing enough for the local market? In your opinion, how do we yes. solve the issue of farm input and tools? So the two questions for now. Number one is, are we producing enough for the local market? Yes, we are. And the second We are producing is, enough. We are producing enough with 75% wasting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in your opinion, how do we solve the issue of farm inputs and tools? Um, the issue of farm inputs, I think that is a major problem. I'm speaking with the All Farmers Association of Nigeria, um, their president uh, from Sokoto, and he has been complaining seriously about farm inputs. Um, most of the farm inputs that they ought to get, like in October, they will, and for them to make sure of in November, they will get it in January or of December or January. And this is a very serious problem in terms of um, uh, like an agricultural calendar for exports. Okay, we uh, just like Mr. Femi said, uh, once it gets back, we're going to see that the IELTS of it because we have quite a lot on table right now. We have so many on table, so many program on table that need to be addressed, and they have to be addressed with time. Time, time in business, time is money. Most of these civil servants, they believe they can co keep coming, going back, back and forth, uh, creating problems with time. Okay, please. That's some area we have to work on too. And I'm pushing very hard. We need the collaboration. We need the inputs of everyone. If you are called upon to help, please come and help. That's the only way we can achieve something. Okay. Okay. I'm going Thank to read two more questions and then I will take a Tope. Tope, I see your hand up. So before Tope, um, the next one says the problem is not packaging, but ensuring that the farmers produce the right foods. How do we solve this issue? You want to answer that? The problem is not packaging, but ensuring that the farmers produce the right foods. How do we solve this issue? Are you hearing me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, okay. Sure. If the okay. captain is frozen. Captain is frozen, so um, maybe. Is that Mrs. Lande Waju? Can you uh, answer that? Exactly. Yes, yes we have so many experts on the mm -hmm. map. So we okay, are. So I take that. I will take that with uh, okay. the previous question. Are we producing enough for uh, to be able to export? The antagonists of the efforts of uh, agencies like NEPC and people like us are those who are only thinking of the stomach right now. And let me say that there are, both in terms of quantity and in terms of quality, they are two separate subject matters. The rice that is of exportable quality Mm -hmm. is not the same as the rice that we are consuming in Nigeria. Yam that is of exportable quality is not the same. Cashew is graded one, two, three. Grade A is exportable quality and it, is, it does not affect what local production is. However, because of the uh, insistence and craze about food security, we give in that yes, we need to improve. And that is what Dr. Adesino did, the current president of uh, uh, Africa Development Bank, when he was minister. His agriculture transformation agenda had the two components clearly spelled out. 
addressing food security and export. Now, the second part of it is export is deliberate. It is strategic. It must be intentional. So for the kinds of off-takers that Captain John Okapu is talking about, for Walmart, for example, they only give you a minimum of 10-year contract, multi-hundred, uh, multi-thousand ton contracts over a minimum of 10 years. Once you get to the level where you have built your internal capacity for this, that can never have anything to do with producing for local consumption. Oh, they are going sorry, to I'm back. establish export-oriented farms. So it is export-oriented agro-export that Captain John is talking about here, yeah, not subsistent farming, as I learned in uh, 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 secondary school. Thank you. Welcome back, Captain. I'll just okay, I'm back. So, so, sorry, I love the, the, the internet went off in this area. No problem. <laughs> we are happy to have you back. Thank so you. The, the question now uh, went down your... You froze up was uh, the problem is not packaging, but ensuring that the farmers produce the right fruits. How do we solve this? Exactly. Issue? Uh, we will solve uh, the issue through training. And when? Oh, through training. Training and certification of the farmers. Okay. And then this next question. Okay. I had someone raise up the end before. I can't see the person again. Are you there? <laughs> Yes, I'm there. Okay, Jamilu Sanusi. Okay, please, you yeah. have the floor. You have two minutes. Okay, I'm. Um, yeah, I'm the state chairman of All Farmers Association of Nigeria, Sokoto State Chapter. Oh, oh. Okay. Thank you for attending. We're happy to have you. Um, uh, looking at uh, the package of practice of our farmers, um, that is where the issue of training have to come in. Because if uh, there is uh, no uh, 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 enough training for our farmers, there is no way we will produce an exportable quality okay. of uh, what we are producing. Okay, I think like he's having challenge with bandwidth. Yes. Too. Yeah, the bandwidth is very low. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. It yeah. Was, it was going to be very uh, useful to have him as a state chairman of a small farmers association. Yeah, maybe we have to write if we are not yeah. able to hear okay. 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 You can encourage him to send in his uh, questions. Okay, are you back? Yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah I'm here. Okay. It's like your internet is, uh, is uh, okay. Okay, can you hear me now? We can hear you, please go ahead. Okay, let me do it briefly. Uh, we have more than 1.5 million farmers in our registrar now. So okay. we equally control KB and Zamfara that has 1.5 million each in their register. So, and what we are saying is that if you can, if you can, have a cluster of like 50 hectares, uh, we can arrange that and give them training, give them the requisite input, that is the organic input, and give them the requisite training on how to apply those inputs in their farm. It's just a matter of 90 days. A cycle of 90 days, we will be producing thousands of tons of tomato, thousands of tons of onion, thousands of tons of uh, uh, carrot and all that. So I don't think we should waste much time on complaining about government. Let's use the available <laughs> institutions we have. Afri African Development Bank is there. The issue of traceability. Uh, Anko Borrowers program, we have a problem with uh, mapping of our farmers. So we now added the mapping component as part of the loan component of our farmers. Why don't we add the traceability card component as part of the loan package? If a farmer is being given 300,000 worth of uh, equipment and uh, input to farm, uh, let's say, beans per hectare. So if the, if the traceability card is costing 6,000 Naira, the loan package will be 300,000 and 6,000 Naira. 
In that way, thousands of farmers will acquire that uh, traceability card easily instead of shouldering the burden on the farmers to pay for it. So we can do it in, in, in a program. We match the cost of the traceability card in the program and we, we supervise the farmers. We have full of extension workers that can supervise the farmers towards uh, organic farming so that within few months, we will have thousands of tons to be smiling uh, uh, out for, for export wheat. We can take it to the laboratory. And, but if we said um, we we'll would just uh, sit down and be lamenting, lamenting, lamentation will not solve the problem. As it were, we are already, we are already testing uh, organic pesticide in Sokoto, in Goranyo Dam. It has more than 10,000 hectares of land. It, they are doing irrigation year round. So they are now, we are now testing organic pesticides so that we will discard the chemical pesticide. Today, anybody that ate watermelon in Nigeria, he is eating too much chemical. Every other day, you have to spray watermelon with chemical, heavy chemical pesticide that will affect uh, uh, the product. At the end of the day, instead of you eating uh, vitamins, you'll be eating chemicals. You'll be, you'll be consuming heavy chemicals in eating watermelon. So we want to change that scenario. We didn't wait for government. We didn't wait for, we didn't lament. We just get a company that has that product. We send it now, as I speak with you, the cabbage, the carrot and watermelon. We are testing that organic pesticide in it. So we, 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 need, to, we need to know how to come together as private sector to find a way forward. Let us do something small. Let us, let us create an alternative platform that will be a guide the way we are doing now. So if we can have 50 hectares cluster, we earmark the farmers, we do the requisite uh, 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 profiling of the farmers, we approach African Development Bank, let them give us a, a loan, the same, the same uh, uh, Anko Boros loan, let us give us, we now add the traceability card as component of the loan. 6,000 Naira for goodness sake, the farmers can pay with their product. So uh, that is my point, thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Let it go ahead. Thank you so very much. Uh, part of what he said is uh, stop the lamentation to the people of Rome. It's not necessary. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Mr. Femi, you are laughing about this. Uh, one other area you have to look at. It's not a matter of giving people loan. Giving people loan is one thing, but then paying back is another problem. So these are part of the things. But um, I don't believe in lamentation. lamentation. Let us work together. Work as a team. Collaborate. Oh, uh, okay. Um, meanwhile, meanwhile, while we are waiting for him to come back, let's take a couple of while who has been raising up his hand for a long time. Top of are you there? Can you? Oh, hi. Um, okay. okay. Okay, well, I think it's still. I said, uh, yeah, he's not hearing us. Uh, he's we are ready to work on the lifting of beans and dry fish. And I believe with these two in place, Nigeria, sir. Okay. So, well, what happened to be one of the... So, he's part of the people that are helping us reduce okay. the cost oh, of training. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay, so actually, thank you very much, Captain. In fact, I'm really happy to be here. I'm really glad I was able to make this presentation. And having listened to everyone speak today, it also gives the inspiration to actually move forward and uh, actually act on all of this. And uh, from all of the things we've heard... Can you I'm, hear me? Um, oh, boy. Yes, we can. What a day. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, talk well, uh, Okay, so from from everything we have heard, I, I mean, I can see that uh, we're actually on the right track. And then, but of course, um, as, as you heard from the last speaker, in regards to a lot of things has to be unlearned from the farmers, and this is this is coming from the experience of how how many people we have been able to train. You know, we see a lot of gaps, too many gaps in things of what they have learned that actually is sort of like on the wrong uh, on the wrong platforms that actually needs to be unlearned. You know, for actually catch up with a lot of all of these things that are needed to be done. And this also goes back to the issue of NAFDAQ and then all our regulatory agencies. There's something about how you actually create a third party auditing system that is actually missing in, in our entire system. Some of these things are not exactly money driven. They are just more of systems and how, how to actually set up the right systems, you know, putting the right account before the horse, you know, how, knowing how to actually do, document rights and things like that. And I think that this is some of the things that we miss out when we're talking about the global gap training and all of these things because it actually captures an entire system of auditing, of verifications, of knowing who to actually contact and things like that. 
which is actually like a, like the is like the engine of knowledge where the farmers can actually begin to actually own their own systems. And this actually goes back to the issue of because I heard something about talking about the difference between the local uh, local markets and then the export markets. There's actually the thing is like once the foundation is right, because once you have the training, it actually captures both local and international markets. But the idea is this is like because I think it was right said that, that the export market captures the difference scope entirely. But because the foundation is kind of like missing, it makes it very, very difficult to actually isolate this from that. You know, okay. and the thing is, this like that actually helps. You know, the whole. System. I'm going to just keep this in as a, as one of the trainers, and then and appreciate everyone that uh, that has been said here, and then well, hopefully we'll be able to work on this and work better on this. Thank you. Oh, I believe um, talking trade is going to come after you. you it, we really need. Oh yes, I could see Fabi Boye's head, Boye's head, the way he was tilting his head. Once it's like that, that means he's looking at. <laughs> and I know everybody really enjoyed your contributions. Thank you so very much. And as we are going Thank along you. now, before I yield the floor for the final time for now, for Femi Boyede and Captain to speak, please, what have you gained today? Just, just uh, a sentence. I can see um, Ibrahim Aruna just put something. He said, collaboration is key for us. That summarizes it for him. So, Olushola Adebesan, I will take you, and that will be it for today while we allow um, our captain and our family to uh, round up. So what have you gained today? Just in one sentence, please put it on the, on the forum. What have you gained today from what we are doing from the webinar? Olushola Adebesan, you have two minutes. Please go ahead. You have the floor. Thank you very much, Lady K. Um, and Captain, I want to appreciate you because you have touched on everything concerning agriculture. I'm an agro processor and I'm in Lagos State. And John Isemede, uh, Dr. Isemede, when he spoke, he spoke about conduit of excellence. I'm one of that move at that time by NEPC. We, that, that group was created to have processors in the South farmers in the north, and we were to work together to bring about a zero rejection of our beans in Europe. Captain, thank you for what you are doing, because we are very worried. It's not only beans and fish that are now banned. Even melon, ogbono, and egusi are also banned now in UK. So please, mm -hmm. you, need yeah. to, you need to bring together the agro-processors to work, to work together with farmers so if we can, if we are going to have traceability, we need to work together. Agro processors and farmers must work hand in hand together to bring about this excellent change that you are proposing. Thank you very much, Lady Key. Thank you, Mr. Akami Boedi, and thank you, Captain. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for keeping to time and thank your you. wonderful contributions. So, Fem Boedi and uh, Captain, you. you have the floor. Yes, uh, um, let me put Let me put it. What did you say? I said, Captain, you please go ahead. Mm -hmm. So I can round up with thank you. Okay, mm -hmm. let me quickly touch on the on the like uh, we have a way to most of most of you know the vegetable call it with right now. Yes. Most of the most of the way do, if not all the way do we eat in Europe comes from Malta, not Nigeria. We do is God given to Nigeria. The same thing is about to happen to Ogo. Ogo now, Vietnamese people now are working on Ogo. And um, all these attributes to certification and training and, uh, and traceability. Once that is established, which we have been in, it's in our back, it's in our pedal right now, and we're pushing very hard on it. Every problem we have in Nigeria today, in terms of production, in terms of market, has to do with certification and traceability. And that's it. That's no shortcut. Thank you very much. Boyade, you have the floor. Are you sure no, no, no. I don't think so. Okay. So, wow. In on the Wow, wow. 
Uh, okay, we might have to. Yes, you may have to come in. Unfortunately, his internet is up. Uh, it's going crazy. Okay. If you don't have it, Mr. Boyd, go ahead. Okay, you're back. It's yeah. having the same problem with me, bandwidth at the, this time of okay. your video. Yeah, you can drop your video, just the audio will be better. Captain. It's Captain, gone. if you stop video. No, it's gone. Order. It's gone. It's gone. It's the okay, so, it will um, come again. Hopefully, uh, somewhere in the next three, five minutes, um, we can have Captain to uh, articulate his final points. A few um, uh, points that we have not had time to actually iron out very properly. And uh, even though we still have a few points, we have exceeded the time that we always uh, keep uh, by almost 15 minutes. So I apologize that this has been rather longer than our usual sessions, but I'm sure you agree with me that every minute spent has been mm -hmm. worth it today. Um, I think it was, a, was it a John or who, who mentioned the issue of how dirty, how um, substandard the practices at the narco shed uh, are. The truth is narco shed, uh, the, uh, I don't think the export that is taking place from that place right now is uh, captured in the NEPC or NBS uh, figures of export out of Nigeria. And it needs to, because Ugu, Okazi, Ewedu, uh, Utazi, Oha, all of these Okro, they are living on a daily basis. Export Digest Television Program, the, my uh, TV pro educative program that I uh, uh, was running, uh, I mean, for four, five years before uh, Jackpa happened to me. We actually went to Nako Shed <laughs> to go and record what was happening there. And it was a sorry, sorry state. I'm trying to imagine if somebody was able to also bring these people into the training and export readiness work stream and give them the necessary handholding to formal exports. I'm trying to imagine how uh, the export figures out of Nigeria will be. Mm. That's one point. I think that needs to be uh, visited. I think we are going to suggest that to the authorities. Um, Bosun Sholani, thanks so much for your tireless advocacy. I saw she dropped in the chat room the issue of paying back loans. Um, it's easy to say they need to pay back. But do we sometimes also understand that there are some force majeure that happen to the Nigerian farmers, such as the flood that Bosun has just highlighted? If a force majeure has happened, and uh, we are all about, uh, these are the areas where government needs to play a supportive role. These are the areas where one of those 18 incentives in 1986 needs to be put to work now. There used to be an export uh, credit uh, guarantee scheme that was supposed to be activated. I don't think we have any export guarantees as of Nigeria today to support and address issues like uh, 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 force majeure. And it is the same line that Central Bank of Nigeria is doing. They are throwing their eyes away. They are closing their eyes to the numerous challenges of exporters from Nigeria and issuing military orders to compel, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, repatriation of proceeds. Of course, if you have not given me money, you have not given me any support to uh, uh, secure. And why secure why do you have to force me? Then you come and start telling me, and then you are offering me 65 Naira to a dollar. So add 65 to 430, 36, I get 501 uh, Naira to a dollar because I passed it through your channel. But the person in zone four is selling the same dollar as 741, 743. You think that an exporter will go to the commercial bank? Those are issues. And finally, what has come out from everybody today is the need for collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. Again, 
the central government has something to do with this because Obama's export initiative will never have succeeded and become national export initiative today if it had not involved everybody, everybody who had a stake in contributing to the success of America's export to the world. How to work up out this collaboration, the framework, the parameter, this is very, very, very important. I don't want to share here now um, a few, two or three experiences that one has had, even in the course of this year, trying to persuade one or two government agencies that it is better for you to have this program as a public-private partnership than for you to give money to private sector to go and do their own, in quotes, while you do your own, so that if we now have a training uh, uh, workshop, where, where Captain Okapu's agro-export group and uh, uh, Sanusi's uh, AFAN have the, not just the knowledge, but also the, the, the reach, the audience that needs to know it. They want to do it in partnership with the agency that has the mandate, jurisdictional mandate to do it. So that the message being sent out there is that finally there is a collaboration between the public and private sector in Nigeria. That's the only way we are going to be sending a positive message to the international community who are trading with us. It's not by government giving money to uh, the, the private sector go and do this. And next week, the same uh, government agency is advertising oh, the same thing that they gave money to go and uh, listen. I think it is uh, not just double dipping, Thank it you. is proliferation. Thank you. Thank you so very much. I can see the head bubbling then. We are starting on a new route. If we allow uh, Femi Boyede to talk, he can talk for the next 24 hours and you will not be bored because he's saying what is really valuable. Thank you so very much. For okay. uh, so, yes, I yield the floor to you again. Maybe you want to wrap yes, up okay. for a minute. Yes, let, let, let me just run up and add something to what Femi said about um, the issue of central bank. Yes, okay. most of most of the cross border trade uh, export we are doing today is because of central bank policy. A lot of people don't want to get themselves caught up in that policy. That's why it's easier for them to cross border, go to Ghana or Togo or whatever, and do their export. You can't tell somebody how to remit their money if you don't work if you didn't work with that person to make it possible. Let the farmer, the exporters, and the shippers decide with their commercial bank, how to go about moving their money, okay? Most of the rejections we have today in Europe, most of the rejections have to do because people cross border to export their goods and are they in the process doing most of it, end up in illegal products that are not supposed to be out there and Nigerian image is being dented. So please, I'm, a, I'm going to be appealing to CBN to let the farmers and the shippers decide what to do with their money. Thank you. Well, thank you so very much. We are finally coming to the end of this program today. Before we land up, I'm sure you you have gained a lot as again this month. And, uh, to summarize <laughs> what has happened today, I will go back to the Prime Minister Narendra Modi of India that said, while he was speaking with one of the agencies of recent, he said, the government's job is to care for the poor, to ensure food, toilets, houses, clean drinking water, drinking water, roads for people. The government's job is to care for the poor if they are sick. And the, gov the job of the government is to see how the produce of small farmers reaches the market. He said, my priority is to provide all this. And the government, uh, the job of the government is not to be in business. Government has no business being in business. Private. It needs to say this loud enough. And he said, if someone calls this socialist, it is acceptable to me. So we should encourage our government to face giving us the basic infrastructure to enable, bridges. <laughs> to enable us 
to actually be relevant in the world market. Is there any last word before we go for today? Thank you. Today, thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you. Thank you very thank you much. But before you go, as usual, please put on your camera. We thank need you. to take picture. We are taking picture. This is the time for us to take picture. So put on your camera and wave your hand. Let's see that you are there. I see Sikiru Ali, Adamu Gabo, Ali Kamakano. Thank you. Always nice to see you guys. Johnny Semide, Bosuchulari, Manuel Macaulay, Kaudeni Rayeto, Mohamed Abdul Dushe. Yes, yes. Put on your camera if you are there. Omolara Koji, Dr. Toy. I'm looking at those I can see. Olushola Adebeson, Grace Oluwadara. Are you taking pictures as we are speaking, guys? Please keep taking pictures. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Olale, yeah, I can see. Okay, if you are not able to put on your picture, you can equally just uh, mm -hmm. thumbs up, thumbs up. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. See thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Captain John. Thank you. Thank you. Every first Every first Saturday, Every first Saturday of the month. And if you are not on our WhatsApp group, please you can send a message to any of us. We are going to add you. And you know, we already have uh, the we have the uh, what do you call it? The marketplace at, as well, the tag trick marketplace. So you have anything at all you want to sell, you want to advertise, you have a program. Please feel yeah. free to come to the marketplace, but make sure your products are genuine. If it doesn't sound genuine, we are going to take you out. Sorry, the forum is for no. Yeah, so if it doesn't yeah. sound genuine, we have a small doubt, we are going to take you out. And if you think we did it in error, talk to us, we verify, and then we add you back after verification, not before. Is not targeted at anyone. We just have to keep the integrity of this project. Thank, Thank you so you. very much.